Song Emperor of the Tang Dynasty is preparing to receive a group of envoys from remote vassal states at Linda Hall. It was 793 AD, 175 years after the founding of the Tang Dynasty. When Li Shi ascended the throne, the once powerful empire had begun to decline in spite of its seeming prosperity. As the 12th emperor of the dynasty, Li Shi is concerned about the future of the empire. But today is different. One of the envoys are from a vassal state ruled by women. But what sort of kingdom is it? The Dezong Emperor is curious to find out. After 1,200 years, today's people, born of the same curiosity, are looking for traces of evidence in the hopes of rediscovering this mysterious kingdom of women. Shanghai Jing, or literally classic of mountains and seas, China's oldest book of geography depicts many bizarre places. In its first chapter, classic of regions beyond the seas, south, there is an account of two women living in a place surrounded by a moat. This might be an early reference to the kingdom of women. Due to the mystical nature of the book, the kingdom of women it depicts is no more than an illusory place. Is such a kingdom a legend? Did it actually exist? <laughs> Intrigued by the mystery of the kingdom, many of today's experts and scholars begin to look into its obscure history. I think we Lishan Eastern Women Kingdom can be found in many historical records of the Sui and Tang dynasties. What kind of kingdom is it, and does it have anything to do with the kingdom of women? elected queen is a common description in historical documents about the Eastern Women Kingdom. So it means that the queendom was ruled by women and that the women there were superior to men. One is reminded of one of the most celebrated women in history,
基础的特点就是女人掌权，这个地方所有的官呢、啊，所有的这个管理，所有的权利者，呃，都是女人，啊，这个，它是一个母系社会的遗留下来的一种文化习俗。The once illusory kingdom is now starting to seem as if it existed after all. Records can be found in the old book of tongue about its geographic location, customs, architectural features, as well as its relations with the Tang regime. But are such descriptions reliable? The Old Book of the Tang covers the 289-year history of China under the Tang Dynasty. Shi Jing Tang, the notorious puppet ruler of the later Jin Dynasty, was the force behind the compiling of the book. This was one of the few achievements in his much despised political life. Sanctioned history compiled shortly after the demise of the Tang Dynasty. The facts in it are seen as reliable and of historical value. Through it, we can infer that the kingdom of women it depicts did exist in history, and that the kingdom enjoyed close relations with the Tang regime. We look at the Tang Dynasty's records. 东女国的国王是曾经是多次，在唐代的时候，在武德就是个唐高祖武德年间就开始进进行朝贡，就进行跟中央王朝联系。Where was the kingdom of women during the Tang Dynasty? According to records found in the Old Book of Tang, people speculate that it was located at the east of the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, and that its sphere of influence covered an area of several counties in Sichuan Province. The Dongyu Province's position should be in the Dongyu Province and the Sichuan Province. 而且应该和这个嘉绒，就是今天嘉绒分布那个区域，有很大的这个重合。Mount Moradua is one of the four sacred mountains in Tibetan inhabited areas. Its highest peak is located in the upper reaches of the Dardu River. The Tibetans living in its vicinity are called Gyarong Tibetans. They are mainly found in Gansu and Aiba, autonomous prefectures of Yunnan Province. The area is assumed to a large extent coincide with the territory of the Kingdom of Women. Can we find some traces of the Kingdom of Women there? 实际上，它这个就是从东女国描写的，它这个地形呢，也很像南巴的那个地形。东女国的核心应该是在，呃，金川丹巴一带。现在四川丹巴这个以碉楼为这个一种特征的一个文化区。丹巴 County in Sichuan Province is a small place covering. Only 5,649 square kilometers. Yet it has been closely connected with the mysterious kingdom of women. Although the kingdom has been lost for thousands of years, people today search for any traces of its existence.
a story from Danbar adds to the allure of this mysterious land. Danbar proved very transformative for the US-based Chinese artist Cao Yong. In 1983, soon after his graduation, Cao came to Tibet. Amazed at the cave frescoes of the Gu Ge Kingdom, he spent seven years there living a solitary existence, copying and drawing inspiration from the frescoes. Thanks to seven years of solitude, Cao Yong's artistic style is imbued with a transcendental power. His life has been like a leaf floating in the wind. Fang in 2004, artistically stifled, Cao Yong traveled to southwest China again, looking for new inspiration. Danba was originally a brief stop on his itinerary, but something occurred there that changed his life forever. Tian where Cao saw the light was Jia Zhang village of Dunbar County, a serene village that went at its own pace, out of step with the world around it. Hidden between the Ka Pama peaks and the Da Jin River, the village is home to many Gaiarong Tibetans. Their fairy tale-like houses conjure the image of the mysterious kingdom of women in the Tang Dynasty. But to Cao Yong, it is also a place of unexpected romance.这个东西它是就像是一种天定的一样的东西
。当时没想到他的回答也让我很吃惊，他说是的。Cao Yong was deeply touched by Danbar County and this outspoken girl. A brief encounter. Just in meeting her in the salad, I think we were very close, and it was impossible to escape the feelings of love or the feelings of love. What were the qualities in Vam that impressed and intrigued Sal so much? Was it her beautiful face, graceful dancing, and sweet singing? I think that in her face, I can feel that the person between us is this kind of truth. I can feel that this kind of truth is this kind of truth. 我就不敢相信还有这么漂亮的姑娘，有意思，你这太可爱了，你这可爱到我就觉得走不了的地步。以后就到时候我就陪着你这个袋子安心扎寨了。Plans, Sal had to leave, but his heart remained. What would happen after his brief encounter with Ram? Sal was amazed that there were so many beautiful girls in Danbar. Place that had been dubbed Bell Valley. The earliest records about Danbar County date back to the Qin and Han dynasties, some 2,000 years ago. At that time, it was the territory of the Xichang tribes. Similarly, the Eastern Women Kingdom is part of the Xichang tribe lineage. That's according to the Old Book of Tongue. This might have explained the geographical and genealogical connections between Dunbar and the legendary kingdom of women. It's possible that genes from the ancient kingdom can be found in the women who reside in this region. Most people living in Danbar regard themselves as the descendants of the flower of 2010. Now she studies at a university in Chengdu and only comes back during vacations. Liu Ying's mother, Liu Amu, was also known for her beauty and was selected as Kamba flower in 2000. Beauty seems to be a rather common feature of Ram's extended family. In 1987, archaeologists unearthed near Dambar County a traditional burial method known as sarcophagus burial. This is common among some southwestern ethnic minorities. A large number of human bones were unearthed. Analysis of these thousand-year-old bones revealed a surprising finding that the average height of men here already reached 180 with women not far behind at 170 centimeters. In such a remote canyon in the Hongduan Mountains, what is the magic that has endowed the women here with such outstanding qualities?
Geographically speaking, the major and minor Jinchuan rivers converge here to form the Dadu River. Many ethnic groups migrated and settled along the river, making Dunbar a center of ethnic fusion. It is probably due to this mix of ethnicities that led to certain genetic advantages, hence the title of Bell Valley. Perhaps it was the qualities inherited from her ancestors that made one so attractive to Cao Yong at the first sight. Is she a descendant of the Kingdom of Women? What's waiting for Tsao and Ram, two people living thousands of miles away from one another after such a short, though sweet encounter? Tsao went back to the US one week after he left Danbar. The intense work there should have tempered his emotions, but the truth was that he ended up missing her even more. He then came to an astonishing decision. This is Cao Yong and his family in 2011. Cao, his wife Ram and their two lovely daughters. Now he is reaping happiness from their exceptional romance. After spending 20 years overseas, Cao eventually came back home and opened his gallery in China. Everything began with the Danba, the alleged center of the Kingdom of Women, Gundam Ram, the beautiful girl from Danba. I think the world is still a long time for me. I want to see it, 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 I want to see it. 实实在在挡不住，但是有这个家会让你心里面呢，非常非常的感觉到一种幸福的稳定。Today, one of Sal's jokes in 2004 is becoming reality. He said he would come and live here in the Kingdom of Women. Now this new house is almost done and will soon become one of Sal's painting studios. This is the charm of Dunbar and its women. Just like the Lost Kingdom of Women, Dunbar has been a magnet for many. However, does the inherited beauty among Dunbar women support the hypothesis that Dunbar used to be part of the ancient kingdom? Based on the kingdom's sphere of influence, it can be inferred that Danbar County may be the center of the kingdom. A 15-character account about it in the Old Book of Tongue added to its mystery. According to historical descriptions, the queen's residence was located in a place called Kang Yan Chuan, a river named Wu Shui traversed the area on a southerly course. Where are Kang Yanchuan and the river named Wu Shui? Kang Yanchuan, this scientific community has two opinions. Some believe it is the Changdu, the Changdu, the Changdu, the Changdu, the Changdu. 
The Dadu River was called Hua Shui in the Tang Dynasty, and it does flow south from this point on. Geographically, it coincides with the account in the Old Book of Tang. However, throughout all written records, Danba has never been called Kang Yanchuan. This withstanding, some scholars insist that it should be considered the center of the kingdom of women. So what are their reasons? This in a very special way. The boys can only sit in the corridor with their heads covered. They are supposed to sing songs to attract the attention of the girls. The girls would listen to the songs and choose based on the one that appealed to them. upon request. Then, round the hearth, they will dance together to showcase their dancing technique and spirit. At the end of the dance, a boy can extend an invitation to the girl that he wants to date. The female is in control during the entire process. It is said that such ways of courtship were once part of the marriage practice in the kingdom of women. However, no such historical records can confirm this and is now just seen as a beautiful remembrance of times gone by. really connect Danba with the Kingdom of Women are these special structures called Diaolo Towers scattered throughout the valley. They were used as watch towers or block houses in ancient times. With a total of 343 Diaolo Towers, Danba is also known as the Kingdom of a Thousand Towers. Owners of these towers are mainly Tibetans. Today, only a very few families still own their own Diaolo Towers. To them, the tower represents a family history. The Wangdu family is very proud of their Diaolo Tower. It's the oldest one of its kind in the neighborhood. In order to better preserve the tower, they moved away from here ten years ago. History and stories related to the tower have been passed down for generations in their local language. In古代,好像几乎每家都有一座吊楼。每座古吊旁边也有这样一个小楼是连在一起。有吊有楼就是一个完整的吊楼。Besides Danbar County, such towers can also be found in the Dadu River Valley, in the upper reaches of the Minjiang River. They are scattered in an area that coincides with the sphere of influence of the Kingdom of Women, which was mentioned in the Old Book of Tongue. 
Is this mere coincidence or a confirmation of the facts? The old book of Tang seems to have provided some clues. There they live in storied houses. The residence of the queen is of nine stories, while those of civilians are six stories. So are these storied houses the Diao Lo Towers that we see today? But who were the builders of the towers? Were they citizens of the Kingdom of Women? Is there reliable evidence to connect the two structures as being the same thing? In order to find out the answer, people needed to first determine a date when the towers were built to see if they were built during the time of the kingdom. This is an abandoned tower in Zhonglu Township. Archaeologists found a large number of butyl mules inside it. These mules, painted with a subtleness, seem to recount stories from a distant past. Are these stories about the kingdom of women? Carbon dating shows that they were only made in the Ming dynasty. This Diaolo Tower is the oldest known building in Danba County. Others were mostly built during the Ming and Qing dynasties. In other words, the Danba Towers we see today came into existence several centuries later than the period of the Kingdom of Women. So can we conclude the Diao Lo Tower is not the so-called story building? A line from Book of the Later Han seems to have answered this question. Therefore, history of the Diaolo Tower began in the Eastern Han Dynasty. That's between 25 AD and 220 AD. It lasted until the Qing Dynasty. 1616 AD to 1911 in this region. Those towers built during the period of the Kingdom of Women may have just disintegrated over time. Historical records provide a vague picture of the Kingdom of Women, where the women hold all the positions of power and men are only meant for military service and labor. Because most of the records that detail its existence appeared during the Sui and Tang dynasties, people infer that the kingdom may have enjoyed great prosperity during that period. At that time, the rest of China had already entered an era of male domination and female subordination. The existence of such a matriarchal kingdom must have been under threat by surrounding patriarchal powers that had been situated in a land of barbarians. Did such a kingdom rely on to survive a world full of tribal conflicts governed by the law of the jungle? Could 
the Diaolo Towers have been of any help. This Today, we can still find openings on all sides of the Diallo Towers that allow for a bird's eye view of the surroundings. This meant that they were used for defense. served as an impregnable military defense. In case of invasion, people could enter the tower and fire on the attackers through the openings, annihilating the enemies who had to inch their way forward over the surrounding narrow paths. Probably thanks to such difficult geographical terrain and the fortress like Diallo Towers, the Kingdom of Women managed to protect itself from outside invasions. Such conjecture has its basis in history. It's supported by the accounts of the famous Jinchuan battles during the Qing dynasty. Between 1747 and 1776, Emperor Qianlong waged two battles to quell the rebellion by the Jinchuan chieftains. Much to his surprise, the elite troops he sent paid a heavy price for victory. This painting, held by the Palace Museum, is a depiction of the fierce Jinchuan battles. In the first battle, the Qing court sent 75,000 troops, expecting an easy win over the rebels. The imperial troops suffered heavy losses, with both its commander and major general killed in battle. After the defeat, the emperor sent over 200,000 elite troops, along with artillery. After six years, the revolt was eventually quelled. But 25,000 Qing soldiers had been killed. What was able to inflict such heavy casualties on the Qing army? The Diaolo Towers are easy to defend and hard to attack. As historical records state, a tower guarded by but a dozen people can stop 10,000 troops from getting through, making such a fortress almost impenetrable. Fangwei. 是一个很主要的生成的一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个
Paolo Towers are not only tough fortresses, they are also works of architectural art. Apart from the generic tetragonal ones, there are pentagonal towers, octagonal towers, and even very rare tridecagonal towers. The more corners they have will add to the complexity of the construction that is required. The number of corners also symbolizes the wealth and power. 就是比较重要的土石棺材的那种雕，都是八角的。呃，这个一般老百姓的那个和房屋相连的雕，大部分是四角的，就是一般角的这个多少，应该和这个这个雕的地位，呃，雕的主人的这个权利这些有关系。The Gaiawong Tibetans here pass down their history through a folkloric tradition. These are the ruins of a Diaolo Tower in Suo Po village, Dunbar County. Legend about the tower in which women play a vital role. According to legend, this area belongs to Chieftain Lingling Jiabu during the Ming Dynasty. Thanks to years of favorable weather and his good governance, the chieftain's fortune and fame grew to an unprecedented level. Every day he racked his brain trying to come up with a way to commemorate his power and wealth so that the future generations would remember his name forever. One day, he got the bright idea to build a tridecagonal Diaolo tower no one had ever owned, as 13 is regarded as the most auspicious number in his tribe. The chieftain sent his men to look for master craftsmen to begin construction. To his great disappointment, none of those prominent craftsmen he found knew how to build a tridecagonal tower. Chieftain was infuriated and frustrated. The helpless chieftain could only resort to the gods for help, in the hopes that they could help him realize his dream. Perhaps the gods were moved by his determination, and all of a sudden, young lady in the village turned up, claiming that she could build a tridecagonal tower. The girl is named Yung Drong Ram, which means auspicious fairy. She's known for her extraordinary intelligence among the villagers. However, she has never built a tower before. Is it possible for her to design a tower that no one has ever built? Eventually, with the help of the gods, she finished the design with Wulia. First, Yung Drung Ram drew two concentric circles. Then, she divides the two circles into 13 equal segments with wooden poles, each division point marked with an erected pole. Lastly, she passed the wool yarn between the 26 intersection points to sketch out the 13 external angles and the 13 internal angles. Thus, a master plan for the tower was readied.
this blueprint, the artisans completed the miraculous tridecagonal tower in only a few months. Why are the towers only found in the Minjung River Valley and the upper reaches of the Dadu Rivers? Can archaeological research shed some light on who came up with the concept of the towers? In 1987, archaeologists found a unique burial method, sarcophagus burial, in Zhonglu Township in Danba County. The dead are placed in slate coffins for inhumation burial. Most of the sarcophaguses in Sichuan province are found in the upper reaches of the Minjung River, the Qingyi River Valley and Gunzi Prefecture. Such distribution of sarcophaguses coincides with the distribution of the Jiaolo Towers. Is there a relationship between the two? Research about the sarcophagus burial shows that starting from the late Neolithic period, people here had been adept at stone building. The technique of building a sarcophagus is quite similar to that of building a Diallo tower. Were the people of this period also the inventors of the Diallo tower? An archaeological discovery in 1988 gave a positive answer to this question. The ruins of a prehistoric human habitation were excavated in Zhonglu Township. A new form of stone building was discovered here. It is an intermediate architectural form between that of the sarcophagus and the Diallo Tower. Based on the discoveries of the sarcophagus burial and the Zhonglu ruins, people formulated a hypothesis that at least 5,000 years ago, there were people inhabiting this area. They gradually learned to build houses and tombs with rocks that can be found everywhere in the surrounding mountains. With the passage of time, their stone construction techniques became more advanced, eventually giving rise to the well-developed local art form of the Diallo Tower. structures that the kingdom of women managed to survive amidst a patriarchal world. The towers standing in the valleys for the thousands of years have witnessed the vicissitudes of people living in this land. In comparison, the legendary kingdom of women is but a blink of the eye in terms of human history. Are the ancient ruins on the 3,000-meter cliff the remains of the kingdom of women? 
How did its queen rule over much stronger men? What were daily life as well as family life like in such a kingdom? Please stay tuned to continue exploring the mystery of the kingdom of women.